Okay, um, let's start with some items from a few weeks ago. So the density job, uh, I checked with Brian a few weeks ago and he had a fix. It was already being worked is what I, what I recalled. And looks like it were, it did fix the, the issue we were seeing. So the, the density cluster test is back to, to working and back to green. So this looks good. Um, okay, now let's go to the second one. So there was, um, I haven't been able to catch up on this one. Um, I know um, the action from a few weeks ago last time was to uh, check to see if we can have, uh, well, actually, let me back up on, on the context here because this is, this kind of a little vague. Um, let me go to our test. So the problem was, right, is that the, um, our metrics uh, were not re reporting the same as they used to be. We were basically were losing data. So um, this came from uh, the metrics refactor. There was a bunch of things that were getting dropped. Uh, there was a, two PRs that we found that that were problematic. So this was being looked at and um, I believe it was fixed. So Lay, I think you linked it in here. I wasn't able to find it. Has this merged? I, I, this is where I'm not up to date, but I saw that. Okay, it hasn't merged. Okay, but it's being looked at as the yeah point here. Okay, all right. Um, so two things that I wanted to bring up uh, here. One is that <clears throat> this one, I I believe it's pending on us to um, you know review the the only thing i um, i have here in the review to mention is that while this fixes the current issue i think the larger issue is that refactoring is um, causing a lot of churn in um, in the metrics as a whole so how can we uh, you know maybe have a test or something like that to you know um, avoid a future churn in the next release. Um, that's the biggest um, question. And then the other thing is, uh, I think this should be a release broker. We should try to get it in before before the release um, deadline. Okay. I saw Lubo joined. Hey, Lubo. Maybe you've got a comment about that. Hey, can you hear me? Yep, can hear you. Perfect. Uh, is the metric related to regression? Yeah. Sorry, uh, I didn't catch that. Oh, uh, sir, is it the metric related regression? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, we're um, talking. So maybe Lay, I don't know. Do you want to? Uh, I don't know if you caught that, but I think so. Lay's, we, we kind of came to the two things is that. We've got the, um, the fix here, and um, what we're looking at is that how can we prevent um, the metrics test from breaking in the future? Maybe we need, um, you know, how can we, maybe we need a test or something to catch these things so that we can avoid any sort of code changes from affecting this in the future. And the second thing is um, this being a release blocker because we, we need to get, um, we'd have these, these metrics every release. And so the, that was the that was the proposal. This change being really sparkly. So I believe we do have functional tests for it and some unit tests. So what I would uh, probably um, yeah, we, we just need to review if if we have everything there or is it uh, some subset of metrics covered and then this should be it. Okay. Do we, um, there might be some there. I, maybe we need to think about it. I, I don't know. Like, I think, um, I mean, LA is what you're saying. Like we, we probably need a little bit more than what we currently have. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, we have heard this instances, um, twice, I believe in last two releases. Um, and unfortunately they always come up at, um, release time. 
so we are we are always finding the issue after uh, the merges and not uh, before uh, before things get merged so ideally i think we should have these tests accurate enough to be blocking prs rather than um, fixing after merges And and I, I actually haven't had the time to dig into how we can fix this. Um, Lubo, is there any pointers or anyone who can help out take a look at such like a better way of, of catching this in CI? Yeah, I think the uh, actually um if there was a proposal on the pr that uh, hey please give me the metrics you you use and i will make sure that we have a coverage for them you scroll down to the uh, pretty much the latest to comment oh okay so yeah that should be it yeah okay so let's do that ally Okay. Yeah, I think we know. Yeah, I think we know this. Yeah, we can probably provide that, and that should give us a way to see if it we go too far off track or something. Just wanted to ask: okay. Have we seen it being broken in uh, one point three or uh, prior to it as well? It broke in one point two, uh, and that one was a release blocker as well. And then this release one point three, we we found another. It, they were not the same set of uh, metrics. Mm. They were different, mm. but um, yeah, it, uh, both the releases. That. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for Villa, so we can have a look at on who did review uh, these refactorings effort and just uh, kindly nudge them to also look at the tests. Uh, and, in presence of the test as well. You know, I think it was here, lay, right? What, what's that? One. Yeah. This, yeah. I think it was this part, right? Yeah, we saw this. We were stable and we just saw this pretty unusual dip here. Yeah, that was the one too. Yeah. Yeah, and then this was the most recent one, uh, Lubo, right? Like we, I mean, we're not doing zero Mr. Plus from before we were doing quite a few. So that yeah, you, you can kind of see. Yeah. So, okay. So yeah, let's, let's, let's lay, let's get some of these, um, some of these that we like have been pretty stable over like probably the last, you know, the last year or so we can probably come up with a range that we expect these in and, you know, and, and then that, that can give us some, that'll give us some feedback. Yeah. Um, so that's the issue. I have is that I am unsure if that will help us catch these issues because even if we are off the range by a little bit, right? And if we start failing, then we will start getting flakes in the system and, and people will just go to a point where flakes will be, you know, flaky tests will be stopped eventually. So I mean, we can try it, but I have some concerns that um, because of the like spiky nature of this, if we are not adhering to the lane, then then the test will you know turn out to be um, not useful. Okay. Well, I mean, what would be? I guess maybe that's what we. That's the question. Is like we don't. We don't have like what would be the alternative and maybe that's we don't know yeah i, I fortunately don't have good ideas we could try that yeah and yeah. the other problem is when we with with doing numerical values is there are it's possible we see changes that actually reduce this stuff in kubernetes or in um even in Qbert, and and so we're not actually breaking metrics we're just we're actually making things and making some sort of improvement right 
I, mean, I guess the thing we could do is, I mean, anything, I mean, it's sort of like, um, whenever it, it's like, it's like specific to a repo almost like maybe that's, I don't know if that narrows it down, but like whenever we're, it seems like we're doing changes in, oh, I don't know where we did these, but I guess it's not really gonna work. Cause like whenever there's, whenever we're doing, I mean, it's in here, like whenever we're doing changes to the metrics here is when we kind of see, it's when I'd be more suspi suspicious that like we're actually making a change that's incorrectly reporting metrics values versus something that's actually a performance enhancement. So I think, oh, that that brings an idea. Um, so one thought I'm having is, can we make the, the, the numerical value kind of test only, uh, you know, blocker for metrics refactoring PRs? So that way we know that if things are missing for for um, from refactoring PRs, then it's blocked. But if things are actually you know not falling into the range in in actual other PRs, that means it could be related to performance or something else. Yeah. So maybe maybe this path right here. Yeah. So you can we can trigger based on a path a test based on a path. So maybe like that's what we do is that's a way to start is yeah. So we do like a, a, a metric. Something like that. Okay, that that seems to be a little bit more actionable, and then, um, because I mean, technically, we don't want to block, or at least we haven't been in the business of blocking. On, for example, if we were to suddenly take in a change that were to slow us down, say like we went our P fifty went from fifteen to forty or something. We've been we we it's just been that's been uncommon I think yeah. yeah so let's we'll we'll table this 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 one we'll hold on to for later I think we just haven't been many of these at all so we'll just continue to just monitor these changes I think what we do now like makes sense like we're we're sort of reporting across releases and we can identify which PR changes it and that seems to be okay we don't need to necessarily block those so we just want to make sure the the metrics are accurate so. Yeah, I guess then this is the only case we want to monitor. Okay. All right, I'll add this in the PR just so that um, it's clear as um, it can help us with the test. And then and then LA, you and I will have to review this, this change. Yeah. Okay. All right, and one net three, how much time do we have? Because we don't want to we probably want to be like in the next week or so like we don't, we don't need a block on the test but i think this this pr like how much time do we have to one dot three releases or what i mean so in case we are blocking it here we're not blocking it for long i i think the date is july 7th i will july 7th. Tell me if there is an update on that okay all right so all right let's try to get let's try to get a reviews in this week away all right. All right, good. Anything else about this one? I think this kind of, this one's been bothering us for a while. So this is good. I think we're making good progress. No, okay. Um, oh, actually, um, before we go to the next one, I'm gonna slide a topic in here. So like we've got, because of the 1.3 release, how should we handle the metrics here? because we basically have data. Well, we have two sets here. I mean, we have the April 7 data that was the first regression and the second one was the May 19th, around May 19th. So our data is for 1.2 to 1.3 is a little bit off. Um, 
I was thinking that's fine, data being off. We can just say that there was a, a bug identified and we fixed it and that reflects in the matrix. I, I think that would be the most accurate representation of the situation if somebody else is looking at these numbers apart from us. So I think okay. it will good visibility. All right. All right, let's carry, we'll carry this topic forward because we need it um, since we were talking next. Uh, I forget the timing on this. So if we're saying July 7th is the release. So July 7th is um, Sunday, a week from this Sunday. So do um, we need to prepare the, the graphs for this and then um, do the backports. Do we need to, uh, we need to have, which one do we need to prepare before the release is cut? I don't recall. Um, we need to create a doc PR for this. Uh, <clears throat> I've asked Srija to help me out on um, on creating this benchmarks for 1.3. Okay. So I'll be working with her to, to help us out on this. Okay. Oh, um, one more thing, sorry. I, um, I think I quoted the date wrong. It's July 3, not 7. Okay, so that's, we've got six days then, okay. Yeah, we'll need that soon. Okay, all right. All right, good. All right, so that means next time, so next time we meet, we'll be past the release date. So yeah, let's, when you have this, um, yeah, let's try and get this first as soon as possible. Okay, yeah, yeah ping me if necessary and it can help. All right, good. Um, all right, let's move on to quark integration. Let's take a look. Memory CPU utilization for control plane. Okay, what do you want us to talk about with this one, um, Shrija or Lay? Um, I uh, I just put it in the agenda to to give an update. Srija, do you want to um, talk about these? Yeah. Uh, or I can. Yeah. So, uh, can you hear me? You're a little faint. Uh, it sounds like a little far from the microphone. Uh, I think there is some light position. Is it sign now? Yeah, that's a little better. I, I think I think it's good enough. Okay, so uh, as part of this PR, uh, we have introduced uh, uh, eight other metrics. Like one is uh, calculating average word API memory usage, and average word controller memory usage, and the minimum and maximum of those two. Uh, components and also we have uh, uh, added one more uh, metric for uh, getting the CPU usage of those components. And uh, yeah, so for word controller uh, memory usage, uh, since there are two pods, uh, we have we are calculating the, uh, I mean we are getting the data from the leader pod. Yeah. Great. Yeah, this is great to see. Okay, you got an example here. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna be great. I'm excited to see us starting to track this. Min controller usage interface. Okay. Side cool. All right, let's see what comes of this. I think there's gonna be a lot of this. This is really useful. Okay, and um, so is this using Quark? Is that, or what's the um, tie-in to Quark? Uh, I can answer that. So um, Ryan, this is not specifically using Quark, but um, we wanted to get the metrics in first so that um, you know, we can have a comparison when we run uh, the clock test that will 
um, stress the control plane. Um, we can have side by side comparison of you know what the normal tests are doing and what the simulation tests are doing. Okay, so that's coming. Okay, and then here's your clock. I see. Okay. Excellent. Do you want to, um, is the plan to take, I mean, this just merged, we probably a, a little bit of a benchmark, or is this actually, which, is this a separate test? Yeah, I guess it would be a separate test, right? So we could always compare. Yeah. Okay. So this is just the framework for the test, which is actual code. I think uh, once this gets merged, we will need a CI uh, configuration PR to enable invoking these tests in, in CI. They'll need one okay. more issue after this to have it. Okay. I think on this PR, the, the only blocking stuff is the setting the, setting the KVM actually to like reasonable value uh, for for the bots to be actually uh, scheduled or not? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think we're going to do that. Uh, it's just because the release has come up um, in next six weeks. I think we have, uh, punt we have, I mean, if things needed to be punted, it would be this uh, PR to the next release and, and we'll take the benchmarking thing first. That's the discussion Rita and I had. Um, I'm not quite following. So, do we want to manage this PR right now? Uh, no, no. This is not needed for one three. Uh, that, that's what I was saying. Sure, uh, sure. But to one four. So we already do merge things to one four uh, at the moment. So I see. Yeah. Good. So if we can get address the. One review comment about having some kind of a KVM uh, devices on the node because I think I believe that would be uh, required required by Kubernetes to actually run there properly. Yeah. And other than that, I don't think uh, we we are missing anything. I had a yeah, actually that was a typo. It needs KVM. Uh, values. Uh, so I was testing on a kind cluster. So I had, uh, I wanted to made it to zero to play with it. And I forgot to push those changes to up, I mean, uh, to the branch. Cool. Yeah, I, I thought so. Um, yes, yeah, so I just let, let it set to uh, the number of pods. That's usually the yeah. reasonable value. Um, one more question was like, um, what kind of setup would we want in the infrastructure for, for these tests? Um, and I elaborate a little bit. Yeah. So currently we don't do any kind of CPU uh, reservation, any kind of, uh, pinning of the CPUs. And I guess if we want to have some kind of real level, uh, reports of the performance, this would be at least the first thing to, to, which I would be looking at. Um, so, Lugo, when you say it's, uh, pinning of CPU, do you mean for the uh, control plane? Um, well, we can say generally for the pod that is being that is going to run the tests, and then we can talk about actually the the VMs or whatever we we are going to use for the test. So that should, uh, I'm trying to understand why would that matter? So my understanding is that if we mention the request and limits in the pods that, that run this infrastructure, then um, we would have a certain kind of stable environment across all the CI runs, right? Yeah, yes, that would be the first step and probably most uh, impactful one. Okay. But even if you have those dedicated CPUs, well, 
first of all, you don't get the dedicated CPUs unless we um, we set up the cluster with the static uh, CPU manager, right? So that's why I'm, um, I would propose this change for the for the cluster to be applied. <clears throat> and then uh, when we get the dedicated CPUs, uh, even after there, we can like the different processes can still switch between those uh, available cores that can also have some kind of impact. But I think it's going to be less important than actually requesting the CPUs and getting the dedicated CPUs on the <clears throat> on the pod. Yeah, it, so that, that's my question. So what will happen if, let's say, we don't have dedicated CPUs, right? And we just have, say, requests. Um, I, I'm assuming we would have requests even as of now, right? Because we are certain, setting a certain uh, limit for word handler pods or... Um, so it, if you get a request, only request, and you don't get the dedicated CPUs, it's likely that you get you get the context switches, which mm -hmm. is still uh, like some kind of performance penalty there. Yeah, yeah. I to me that is fine because so I think to to put your thoughts in a different way, you're concerned that while these tests are running some other CI workload would also be running that would steal cycles from, from the scale test, correct? Uh, correct. Um, maybe small correction is the not cycles, but it would just preempt the, uh, the task from the CPU, which is also a small penalty for, for the task running in the pod. Yeah. I, I think to start with, it's okay. Um, because we just want to get some kind of a baseline as to what the the cluster like what would be like a a signal of expected usages because if we assume that over time that that noise of other processes taking um, CPU cycles um, could remain constant on an average, then um, you know, we can say that the the baselines could only differ because of code changes. Everything else uh, remains constant. I mean, on an average, remains same over time. So with that thought process, I thought it was okay, but I'm not sure if, if I'm uh, missing anything big here. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Um... And we can always like monitor if there is a CPU contention or not for the pod. Correct. Yeah, yeah. If we if we find that these numbers are way off because of CPU um, uh, starvation, then then I think we can definitely add the the pinning and reservation um, there. Good. Do we, do we have a PR already for for the quark work for the quark job? No, we don't. Um, I okay. I think um, we are going to prioritize the release benchmarks first, and then pick up these two things. Sounds good to me. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, I think yeah, I think that's all we have. All right. Any other topics before we go? Um, <clears throat> sorry, I, I think we have a few minutes. One more um, discussion topic that I don't have in agenda, but it came up in the um, in the PR for adding resource utilization. Um, Ryan, this is more of a discussion. So in the resource utilization, currently we have Vault API and Vault Controller. Uh, resources, we should ideally have word handler resource uh, metrics be tracked as well. But uh, 
I wanted to have a discussion on how would be the what would be the best way to uh, you know kind of present that metrics and and track it right because the issue is that we have let's say 10 word handlers in the in the cluster due to 10 nodes right now the amount of information we will get on each so if we talk about average min max um, cpu utilization sorry average min max memory utilization and cpu utilization we have four metric for one node and then we'll have 10 so 40 metrics to track right and that will just lead to data explosion so i'm trying to think if, if there are better ways to um, track word handler resources we can do some average and outliers maybe mm. Yes, yeah, so like um, average of all the pods. Yes, Min of max. all the pods, of all the pods, and then uh, just keep the some you know out, outliers from the lower part and uh, upper part of the range. So um, yeah, basically, what you want is is uh, kind of base what like let's say. 60, 80 percent of the handlers are running with, and then you want to have the outliers like, oh, these, let's say two are running like one tenth of resources from from the average, and then maybe this this one is running like ten times more resources, and um, that could be useful to to see, in my opinion. I think that's a good starting point, but what I don't understand is how would that data be helpful to us, right? So let's say, let's say we have the bottom 10th percent metric go up in our dashboard, right? What would be the action items? Um, mm, yeah, so basically we would need to uh, investigate why this is happening uh, like the outliers are interesting because you can learn like what can influence the memory consumption for example right um increase in some kind of average or percentile percentile uh is pretty much the same uh, but if it's if it's bigger percentile, then we know that it's like some um, systematic issue, or maybe not an issue, but increase uh, rather than some outlier or edge case. Got it. Okay. So I I think only systematic issues could be found from such. Uh, data, right? Because it, for the outliers, you might need uh, the pod information or or the source information where those outliers are coming from, and you'd actually not be able to do anything, any kind of debugging on the outliers. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, even for the systematic one, it's more of um, for us seeing it that there is some kind of issue and then debug it because. Um, I guess we don't have enough data to, from like from those da data to do, say, okay, this is probably why we see the increase. You, will, I think we always will go uh, do that, do the benchmark again, again and trying to find uh, those outliers, basically in live session, right? And then um, trying to scrape like. Uh, CPU or memory samplings uh, to see like the memory stack, uh, what component is uh, allocating what kind of memory, why, and uh, CPU the same, like what kind of function is running the 
the highest uh, CPU uh, time. Yeah. So you're saying uh, for, so for systemic issues, we need history. I mean, we get history with our tracking anyway, right? For outliers, we'll have to reproduce that issue in our own environment and we can um, debug from there. This, right, right. I interpret it. Right, yes. So, okay, yeah. I this, give us, yeah this gives us, yeah, gives us the visibility and then uh, why it's more of finding out why. Yeah. Sure, yeah, I, I think that makes sense to me. Okay. I, might be worth to uh, capture this discussion in an issue and um, we can you know um, find ways to to get that in our benchmarks but for the quark work uh, we, we are not going to have the handlers right yeah yeah so uh, it's going to come next i guess when we have the correct like Yes, Good. yes. And, and that would be our, like, like that, that spins up a great story, right? So um, it, we have control plane metrics, we have control plane benchmarks, we have simulation to ex like extrapolate that, but we don't have word handler metrics. And then we add um, the, the virtual kubelet implementation and we start uh, taking that um, into our benchmarking. So I, I, I think it rounds up all, all the scenarios. Yeah, but by the way, uh, I think this week we merged like three PRs which are required for the for the cube mark like uh, benchmarking. So finally some progress made. Awesome. Yeah, um, I think I at least I have lost um, track of how uh, things are going there, Rubo. Um, if if you have a document or something where um, you're um, designing or um, tracking these things, please share it with me. I think it will be helpful um, and and a learning um, experience for me. Yeah, I think I have a document. Um, yeah, the problem was I had I made a couple of PRs back in, I think, this December last year, and they are just getting reviewed now. So that's, that's the main bro broker. No worries. OK, thanks. But I will try to find the document again and uh, fill in like what's happened since then. All right, sounds like a good premise, guys. All right, anything else? Okay. Uh, just a well. small, small question. Yeah. When, when, when do we do the 1.3 benchmarks? Do we do them only after we, we have actually released or before? Uh, we ideally do it before. So the the workflow is that uh, we'll merge a couple of PRs to CI a performance benchmark repository from there, capture uh, uh, images of the benchmark and then uh, PR into uh, the docs, keyword docs uh, folder. So I, I'm expecting two or three PRs to uh, be opened um, before the release. The hope is, or at least until 1.2, we have been able to cherry pick onto the release branch. So um, that that would be our target. But even if, I mean, that would not be a release blocker. In the past, we have done the cherry pick after the release also. Good. Yeah, I actually tagged the metric back as a release blocker for us. So that's going to be uh, blocking the release. And probably I do one more uh, release candidate than this or um, next week, depending on the fix. Um, so maybe we are going to postpone the GA by a couple of days. Okay. Just so you know. That will be great. 
Thank you. Yeah. Oh, um, another thing uh, regarding this topic. I've asked Andrew to create an issue for for SIG scale when we get uh, closer to release. Uh, the process sh should be that two or three weeks before the release, when we start cutting out the release candidates, we should have an issue come to SIG scale that, stay, that says start preparing for benchmark. And that can give us a early heads up to get started on, on these things. Because anyway, when the release branch gets cut, the code for the performance test will, will get uh, diverged. So I think that will be a good refinement to the process. Noted. Um, yeah, I will note it down as well. All right, cool, guys. All right, thanks for the discussion. We'll talk next week. Thanks, folks. See you next week. Thank you. See you, bye. -bye.